Good morning, The Daily Echo. It's July 16th, 2014, and it is a Wonderful Wednesday. I'm going to take a little bit of time today, and if you've noticed the title of this is Taking Back Your Attic. Maybe a little bit confusing. I was on the phone with Dave Blanchard again today. I talk to Dave occasionally, and Dave's written uh, many books. One of them is Today I Begin a New Life. And it really is the Og Mandino for the 21st century. It's basically Og's book, and it helps us apply it in our lives today. But I was really impressed with um, the story, a story Dave had told me, that it was, it was really a, um, a dream that he had had years ago that really helps us understand a very important principle. And Dave says he, he visualized this, um, this house, and it was a big house. And as he started to move up the stairs to the top floor, there was a lot of noise going on, and, and behind this door, it sounded like a tornado was in there. And he said he opens up the door, and things are spinning out of control, objects everywhere. He says he noticed um, a refrigerator spinning, um, almost you know, taking him out as it goes around the air. And he pondered, he says, could this represent my insatiable hunger that strikes me and my wife when we're enjoying late night movies? Later, he recognizes a treadmill spinning in the air. And he says, I wonder what it's doing up here. Could this be the treadmill that I've promised many, many times to get on and get my exercise program back under control? And then he says he goes on and he, and he says he, he saw many inviting and enticing movie screen projecting scenes of vivid fantasies of a life without stress or pain or frustration. It represented times when he would go off and dream of these uh, millions of dollars without working. Next, he says he saw a copy of The Greatest Salesman in the World. This was a project that he was working on. And he said he reached out to grab it. And in the moment that he did, his laptop came screaming by and almost took his hand off. And he said, could this represent all of the countless emails that I'm addressing every day and I'm not getting to the work that I need to do? He said there were so many things flying around in the chaos that he dared not step into the room. And I want to read a few things here. He said he also saw a lot of haunting ghost-like figures that were in this room, and they're screaming and yelling at him things like, you're worthless, who do you think you are? You'll never be worthy. Maybe God doesn't love you. You can't do anything right. The most troubling voice of all, he says, said, how dare you interrupt our room? Who invited you? Get out. You don't belong here. He says, I recognized these voices. They were the ones that had discouraged me and talked me out of doing the work that I needed to do and particularly this book and the scrolls. Um, he says, they keep me from embracing my natural gifts, staying present in the now and doing the work of creating my life instead of fantasizing it. He states, this is where all that resistance, rebellion, and escape and avoid comes from, this room. He then says, I threw the door open, boldly stood in front of the door frame, raised my hands, and with newfound confidence and frankly righteous indignation proclaimed, this is my house, my house. Stop this craziness. I am taking back control of my house starting with this room. I am so sick and tired of being belittled, condemned, distracted, deluded, and summarily dismissed. It was so clear to me that what happened in this upper room directly impacts me too often negatively. This diminishes my ability to show up for others and to do the things I need to do. That meant I had to take back control of my attic. Otherwise, I was robbing everyone of my best self. And then in conclusion, I think he says here, he says, I continued yelling while stomping my right foot to the extent each and every word. I am so sick and tired of all of you attempting to stop or shut down every good thing I begin, every commitment I make, every goal I set, every good idea that I have. For years, you have swirled around unchecked, undisciplined, with little or no structure as if this is your own place. For years I have made vain attempts to stop your insanity and make changes, and you have fought me tooth and nail, not wanting to be controlled. I was angry because of you. I directed my anger outward. That day is over. Today I take back my attic. And the only reason I go through this, and it's a longer echo today, is because I think we sometimes let our minds go unchecked, and we, and we, and we almost act as though we have no control over it, that our mind just, that's our mind, let it do what it wants to do. Instead of stepping in that addict and starting to say, knock it off, I'm in control here, stomping our foot down, saying it's over. I'm tired of you thinking what you want to think, I control you. And I think the moment that we start to create our lives, instead of let our lives happen because of thoughts and ideas that come from the news and from um, what we read and listen to, 
we don't all of the time just try to think and do the things that we need to do and intentionally get in that attic and make those decisions. So it's a great analogy. If you read the book, Today I Begin a New Life, it's one of the many stories that I think are very uh, poignant in allowing us to be able to um, identify. I could really identify with that because there's things in my mind that go on all of the time. I could identify with the computer almost cutting his hand off because sometimes I spend so much time on this and it distracts me from doing the things that I really need to do. Have a wonderful day. Think this over. Take your attic back. As always, thanks for tuning in. Second chance.